Okay, thank you very much. Welcome everybody to this uh, new lecture. Today we are joined by Carlo Piana. He's an uh, attorney at law uh, in Italy, but uh, he's uh, uh, a very uh, renowned uh, free software advocate uh, and uh, uh, he has uh, a lot of experience on the copyright issues, so specifically on uh, uh, open source software, free software. Uh, he is uh, um, external counselor for the Free Software Foundation Europe, if I remember correctly. Uh, so uh, in the free software community, he is definitely uh, the person to, to go to. So we are very excited uh, to, to have him today. And um, so without further ado, I would uh, leave the floor to him for his presentation. Well, th thank you, Francesco, um, uh, and, and, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Yes, I'm a lawyer and I'm also an advocate of free and open source software in general of digital liberties. Uh, a full presentation of the issues uh, that we are going to discuss today will last fairly too long. All I want to have today is to be able to seed some information, some general and top level information on how intellectual property works, how it impacts on, on software and free software, what is free and open source software. And uh, we will, uh, if we have time, we will be exploring a few uh, adjacent uh, fields which are relevant for scientific production, but I mainly concentrate on our intellectual property and, uh, and free software. We are the, um, <laughs> the bread and butter of my practice and my today also professional life. So um, I have a few slides. So if you follow me, I will switch into them and voila. So uh, let's start <clears throat> with the first general concept. We hear many people speaking of intellectual property. But actually, there is no such a thing, if you consider it wisely, there is no such a thing as intellectual pro property. Or we call intellectual property a, a set of different subjects which dif differ uh, for, uh, on, on, many, on many accounts. So uh, the only thing they have in common is actually are two things. First, they are rights, negative rights or exclusionary rights. That means that uh, an intellectual property right doesn't give you any special rights, but to prevent others from doing something. And in order to, to do that, they require something on the top of it, which is uh, a legal framework. Without a legal framework, intellectual property will not exist. So as we say, there is no such a thing as intellectual property in nature. It's not, there is no natural right. Actually, in the history of humankind, um, these rights have come relatively late. Copyright uh, and, and patents came around, well, uh, in the uh, 17th, 18th century. So uh, uh, science, um, uh, art uh, were flourished without them. Uh, they, so they are based on, on, uh, on a legal framework. And because of that, it's somewhat difficult to uh, speak of them in a jurisdiction independent. So you must, uh, must speak of them and must discuss them in the framework of a, of a single jurisdiction. So uh, the Swiss law, the French law, the Italian law, and the German law. But this is just a general uh, remark, which um, it doesn't tell the truth entirely. Because uh, there is a uniform law, or at least a principle of these legal subjects are um, uniform across many jurisdictions, even the, 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 the industrialized world, 
uh, has uh, rules which are uh, sort of similar, if not identical, across them. And we have, uh, we have uh, international laws like the Berne Convention, WIPO treaties, uh, WTO treaties, the TRIPS, and so on, which uh, uh, dictate certain rules which have to be implemented in certain states. That goes for patents, trademarks, and copyright mainly, and also trade secrets. So uh, most of, 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 of what you learn in your own jurisdiction is uh, pretty much the same in other, uh, other countries. So, um, so I mainly refer to these high level um, details instead of digging to, into the particulars because they are the ones which have a sort of a universal application. Sometimes I will discuss of particular uh, of my jurisdiction and, and, and European because uh, they are uh, interesting in general, but you don't need to, to, to know much about it. So I said that these rights are different, uh, have many differences with each other so that they can hardly be put together in one consistent set. And um, so first, let's, let's, let us discuss what these rights are, at least, at least of, of them. We have uh, copyright. We have patents. Actually, there are many patents, many different kinds of patents. But we, when we say patent, we we speak of patents about um, on, on industrial inventions. We have trademarks. We have trade secrets, which used not to be a, an IP right, but they evolved into an IP right recently. And in only in you, we have database rights. These are the main rights. There are many uh, smaller rights, design rights, uh, 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 topology rights, uh, uh, but they are not that interesting and um, have a very specific field of application. So we were not discussing. This is this is the, the general, the, the, the main elements of the family, if a family exists. So let's um, discuss what what is the difference between them. So learning differences, in my view, helps understanding their nature as well. So uh, they differ on the condition uh, whereby you obtain them, the territorial protection where they work, actually, uh, what they do protect, and how long they last. So let's see uh, first the condition to obtain them. Um, this is this is already something very 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 general and very um, um, having a variety of, of issues. Uh, sorry to 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 to, to wrap it. Copyright. Copyright uh, is uniformly regulated by the Berne Convention, so the requirements for uh, having it are uniform. So in any country and most of the countries are a part of, of the Berne Convention, um, recognize uh, grant copyright protection for the same fact that you have created something. Even if you don't want to have copyright, you get it. Be, uh, I'm speaking here. If I wasn't uh, aware of my rights, I nonetheless would enjoy copyright protection for the speech because, because it's going to be recorded. And re uh, re recording means fixation, and fixation is what makes copyright. Uh, of course, I'm uh, my. Or, uh, it must be something original. So there is no requirement. There is no application. There is no even. There is no phrase, no magic word for creating copyright. And there you, you don't have to pay anything. It's gratis. So you don't have to pay a fee, a tax, or, or anything. Uh, which is not unlike the next right, which is patents and trademarks. Both are required. Uh, they are completely different, of course, but uh, the way you obtain them is similar among this uh, and for this particular um, aspect. So you have to, to make an application. So you have to claim uh, protection. If you don't claim protection, you are not protected. Uh, 
trademarks is a uh, um, is different because you also have de facto trademarks, but it's it's another story. We speak of registered trademarks. So you have to make an application. Uh, there is an office, a central office that um, checks whether you comply with the formal requirements and if with the substantial requirements. So you have a, an examination and only following to examination and following a period where uh, people are allowed to object, you get the patent, you get the trademark. And this is made by a, a grant, a deed, which is public, is made public, is in the database. I can know how, uh, how many patents uh, uh, this person or this company has registered, uh, as or how many trademarks uh, they are, um, are the owner of, because, because there's a, there are publicly accessible database. Unlike copyright, nobody would know that I have, uh, on the 26th of October, I have obtained copyright of my speech. But everybody, if I make an application, everybody eventually will get to know that I have a uh, registered trademark. So there is some certainty in patents. There is some certainty on patents on what titles do exist. There is no certainty on, on copyright. And of course, you have to pay a fee you have to pay a tax for it, which is quite high, by the way, for patents and for Premax for getting worldwide protection. You are going to pay a very high amount of money, even if in the individual uh, jurisdiction you will have to pay a little. For trade secrets, uh, then you only need to keep something mm -hmm. secret and keep it protected. Uh, substantially, the secrets are protected because they are valuable secrets for uh, industrial application. Uh, and database is similar to copyright, but it's, as I said, is only available in, in you, in you, so we don't uh, discuss that as much. Uh, speaking of which, i.e. territorial scope or protection, uh, you have uh, a different, copyright, uh, different protection depending on what kind of intellectual property you are uh, obtaining. If you have copyright and you have trade secrets, uh, you get protection in one country, you have copyright protection worldwide. Because that's automatic. There is no uh, way of extending, there need to extend protection worldwide. Because you get then virtually worldwide. Whereas for patent and trademarks, this is state by state. You have actually do the rounds and ask for protection in each and any jurisdiction. There are ways to have one single title extended to many, but the title comes from each and any uh, offices and each and any offices can say, mm, no, no, you don't get it. So you can be, be protected for 96 countries and not in, uh, in other four because the other where you try to have protection because the other four say, no, no possible. Uh, we have already done something like that or you don't, don't satisfy the conditions. So it's, it's always state by state. And for database rights, as I said, uh, it's a you only protection. There is no protection elsewhere. Although in some jurisdictions, like in US, there is uh, an attempt to, to get to the same protection through copyright, but it's very, very difficult because of the different nature of copyright and database protection. Scope of protection. Uh, that's very difficult. This, this entails the very nature of the protection because copyright uh, protects original creation. It protects the parts which is not necessary. And copyright exists only if there is creativity. If uh, there is only one way of expressing yourself, there cannot be any copyright. Copyright may co only covers the, the, um, the form of expression. Whereas patents cover the, uh, a way to resolve a technical problem. So when they say this thing is patented, it's not the thing that is patented, but the way this thing resolves, embodies the idea that resolves a technical problem. Be it a new drug, be it a new process, be it a new material, be it a, a, a way to resolve a, a, a computer science problem. Trademarks, a trademarks protect something that identifies a product 
or service of a brand, something which is distinctive, a sign, a, can be a word, can be a sound, can be a logo, can be a color, can be an odor, anything that is able to distinct, distinguish something from something else and apply to a service mark, so service brand or company that is protected. Database rights protect data sets, i.e. aggregation of data, hmm? not original, but the fact that it's uh, something that is, uh, has been collected and made, uh, um, made as a whole. And it protects uh, only um, extraction and reuse of the data set or substantial part thereof. And trust secret protects the secrecy. So protects secrets from being revealed. So it's a, it's a, it's a mean to keep things, information secret and not reveal. Patents and trade secret are sort of the opposite. Patents make something which ought to be secret public, whereas trade secret keeps them secret. And also the duration is, is very, very different. So copyright extends uh, for the entire lifespan of the co-authors and plus 70 years after their death. So you, you still getting money after your death. Of course, uh, uh, your, your heirs will benefit from that. And uh, many, most of the time, the copyright is assigned to companies, so companies last more than the life. Walt Disney is an example, of course. Um, patents only last 20 years, and that's a very, very sh uh, fixed time. Uh, you get protection from the day you claim protection until 20 years, full stop. You can get some extension on technicalities, but that's the duration and cannot be renewed, unlike trademarks. Trademarks can last forever as long as you renew them, as long as you use them, because if you fail to use, you lose them. Uh, but uh, they can last forever uh, until you renew and pay for them. Trade secret, of course, they, they, they remain protected as long as they are relevant, i.e. they are secrets and valuable. And database rights, I have 15 years duration uh, from the less substantial investment. So um, to recap, um, again, many subjects which require attention on each for their own specificity. There is no general discourse you can do on, on IP, barring the fact that this is a subject which has some economic value, but that's it. The, the legal protection is very different. And sometimes um, the, the, the protection, sometimes the, the legal principles are one the opposite of the other. So let's dig more onto software, which is the, the subject of matter I know best and I'm most uh, famous for. So protection of software, uh, uh, it's it's a very complex subject actually because uh, usually they say oh oh no no, pro no problem uh, software is protected by copyright end of the end of the story this is not quite true actually the protection of software can be very complex copyright copyright is uh, just the first and most evident protection that or that software uh, benefits from. Um, because of uh, the international legislation, software is protected as, as, as if it was a literary work. So it's protected uh, as uh, just like a, a, a novel or a poetry. But of course, uh, unlike, so unlike poetry, uh, its value is a utilitarian value, it's not in, uh, in, in how you enjoy it by reading or enjoy it by uh, watching a movie. It's, it's, uh, it's completely different. And, but uh, the protection is, is similar. It's just equivalent. It's not identical. Um, um, there, there, should, there, there could be a very long discussion on what this entails, but not for today. Uh, patents, patents are relevant. Uh, that's quite surprising, but it's, and when I started studying uh, this subject matter, that wasn't the case. Started started being relevant uh, in this in, uh, with the beginning of the sec second uh, millennium, and alas, 
trace secret because software can also be secret if you get um, software compiled software object code you cannot see through it you cannot uh, read how it was made attempting to read it is a violation of copyright so it's, it's something that is kept secret of course uh, the way you name software uh, can also uh, be, be uh, uh, interfere with, with copyright and you can also have but it's very residual you can have copyright database right so you see one single item one single artifact is protected by no less than four, if not five different kind of protection, which is sort of unique. You don't have this, this many protection in any other subject. A picture is a picture. A movie is a movie. Maybe you have copyright on music, on, on synchronization, on, on the subject, on the play. Uh, you have neighboring rights for, 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 for the actors. You have the right for, for, the, for the director, but still copyright. You don't have patents on a, on, on, on a movie. You don't have a, a, a trade secret on a movie. You might have a trademark, of course. But on single items and 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 of course the the target is protected. But but this is very unique. Software is the most complex IP subject that you could come across. So uh, exactly uh, because there are two different protection and which are orthogonal as I said one to to the other. It's interesting to see those two protections uh, insist or impinge on one single item. So uh, as I said before, um, uh, the difference between patents and copyright is that patents cover the idea however it is expressed. So no matter how you mix and match things, if you um, practice the invention, you must uh, clear uh, patent rights. Conversely, according to copyright, you only protect the form of expression. So I can uh, imitate, I can even copy the way some piece of software works. I, I look at it, I, I, I understand how it works. I can, I'm, I'm free to replicate this as long as I, 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 I'm not copying the source code, as, as long as I get there by rewriting on myself, because copyright only protects the form of expression and not the idea behind it. As I said, if, if there is only one way to, to, to express oneself, and this is the case for interfaces, this is the case for uh, 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 um, file system. So I have only one way. If I have to call one function, I have to call it by its name. I don't have alternatives, then there is no copyright protection way. Uh, as I said, uh, there's a, there's, there are laws, especially in Europe, uh, not here in Switzerland, but in Europe, there are laws that say uh, that patents do not cover software as such. Uh, Article 52 of the European Patent Convention say um, uh, exclude the matters, mathematics, algorithms, and software as such. But in, in this, uh, in this, in this uh, slide, I've put a, a laughing face because this is a laughable concept. Because they say, okay, but this is not software as such. This is of not software as uh, made uh, uh, made working in a computer. So uh, actually, Europe is the fastest growing um, jurisdiction when it comes to uh, register patents for software, having software components in it. So it's, uh, it's a real thing. Uh, many say, oh, no, it's, 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 it's not allowed. It is allowed, and it's a, a, a current problem. So uh, to understand how this is a problem, um, you, you need to understand how uh, you can in, uh, end up infringing. Uh, if you have copyright, uh, you have, in order to infringe other copyright, basically you have to copy. So you must, there is no innocent, innocent uh, uh, copyright infringer because you, oh, I didn't know. Maybe you have mistaken the licensing condition, but uh, if you copy, you copy, full stop. 
um, because uh, it's it's almost impossible to get to the same artifact for for something more complex than a very simple routine and not having copied. That's uh, it's 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 a very very odd combination. It's one zero 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 point zero 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 one p. Okay, uh, with Python conversion is very easy because you, you you might might not having uh, most of the, the the software developers never read patents because there is nothing in in there to for for them. There is no 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 lesson to learn. So um, uh, it's very easy to stumble in into onto 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 uh, software protection and never get started with uh, with uh, with more rights. Uh, software is a subject that can be traded, can be distributed as, as, as any, any corporate subject. And the way that the, 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 this, this software is distributed goes under different, different means. Uh, if you don't put any license, anything attached to it, it's all right reserved. So uh, if, to do anything with this piece of software, even if it's public, publicly available through the internet, but you don't see uh, this is licensed under this condition, then you must assume it's all right. So I cannot even touch it, cannot copy, I cannot use it. Or usually software gets, uh, or it traditionally gets to you with a, a license attached called EULA, which is a acronym of end user, end user licensing agreement, which uh, sort of discusses what what rights you have under which condition what you can do with the software and, so, and, and this is a, the, like the deed you get uh, the, the deal we get from from the copyright holder um, of course you can if you are a copyright holder you can sell everything so you can sell your copyright copyright can be transferred onto onto somebody else or to a company. Uh, if you write something for your employee, your, your employer, and you are an employee, uh, it's most likely that the, the, the title is based on, on your employer and not you. But you can always trade it. I can, oh, I have this piece of software. I don't want to use it anymore. I can sell it to anybody else. Or finally, which is the, the subject of, 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 my, of my work most of the time, is you get it under a public license as open source. This is, this is uh, something which is unexpected if, if you want to uh, know copyright, but it's a way, actually, open source is a way to use copyright for, in a creative way, not to restrict, but to give permission. So, in a nutshell, uh, open source is a, is a way of licensing software. So, making software available uh, maybe having uh, the, a way to uh, cooperate and to uh, write uh, software cooperatively. But uh, the essence of it is that you get a permission as a public license that the guest it grants everybody, not one-to-one, -one, but to everybody who gets in touch with the software, uh, some liberties. The liberty to use the software, to study and change the software, distribute the copy of the original software or, excuse me, of um, modified version of the software. So it expands your rights. You do, have no rights because of copyright. And this kicks in to expand the, the, the software. Actually, these are the four freedoms of software. And uh, has they have been published by the Free Software Foundation. The, in, actually, there is another way to define software. Um, I speak some, sometimes I say free software, sometimes I say open source, they are roughly the same thing. So there is no scope to distinguish them. But open source literally means software, which is under a license, uh, which is being approved by the open source initiative according to the open source definition. I say a license because everybody can write a license uh, for, for making free software, but, um, we name them. We have some model. We have some very popular uh, license and some very unpopular license. And writing a license of your own is a very, very, very bad idea. So we call licenses as we, as uh, uh, by their name because they, we, there are uh, hundreds of them, but they must use uh, just a handful or some 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 more. So. Um, um, 
actually um uh, open source is about how the software is created for sure because um, sometimes it's created by a community but that's not necessary there are there is open source which have been created by one single company or even by a single person uh, it's distributed yes this is uh, the the conditions and the means by under which and the condition by which it is distributed how it is maintained and how can it be used and to what extent and under which condition it can be used, modified and studied. So, uh, uh, because uh, free software and open source software is a very complex subject at the end of the day. Um, discussing the, 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 the legal implication and why, discuss, uh, why it, using software is not that easy is because, well, um, the word is complex and there is no, 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 no way to avoid it. So, as I said, um, uh, software comes naturally under full copyright or right to serve. But, um, and, and by writing software, you get the copyright on it. But actually, nobody writes software starting from line one and proceeding. Software is a consistent, a continuous reuse. You take some code, you, um, you include this code in your own software. And this code, um, this uh, code that you reuse are its own conditions, and you have to comply this the, uh, with this, this condition. These conditions are called because it's software that you get in. It's called inbound. Um, uh, actually, they want to say inbound license is the license that of the software that others have made, and you are including and reusing in your project. Uh, of course, that comes natural the soft the condition of the artifact that you make and distribute that is called outbound and why we're discussing because making this um this software which is combination or uses pieces of software like libraries or fragments or snippets and stuff it's called a derivative a derivative is a is a work in original work whose copyright is of the last one in, in the chain of, of, of making the software, but and this and, and the copyright is theirs, but in order to be able to use and distribute and and, and, and copy this software, you have to clear the conditions because this is, as I said, a derivative. So it uh, uh, requires permission from the original, uh, the, the original author. As I said, these conditions are established once for all as a public license, but still you have to consider them. And why this is important to know, because uh, in, in, uh, uh, these, these licenses are not, are not just, oh, do whatever you want. They have conditions. They, this is a, a, a um, a, um, a the grant is conditional upon the conditions um sometimes you hear things like virality or uh i don't know um there is no ma magic in it there is no difference between how open source and free software work and proprietary software so uh in order to be able to use a powerpoint you have to pay a license to microsoft in order to use a, a free software in order to distribute a free software you have to comply with the conditions of this of the software there is no difference so uh if the condition are are complied with you get the permission if the condition are not complied with you don't have the condition as simple as that. There is no magic. There is no uh, no particular um, um, particular um, uh, weird uh, principle of law applying here. So uh, people say, okay, but is this copyleft? Is this uh, the, the virality you are speaking about? Uh, well, no. Uh, when we speak. Uh, when we, when, we, when we speak about copyleft, we speak actually of a subclass of the free software condition. You can have free software non-copyleft, I mean, under some condition which don't relate to uh, what we were discussing in, in a minute. Um, some conditions, uh, 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 which are copyleft conditions, um, try 
to impact on the condition of the outbound conditions. So that the most common copyleft license um, is the inbound license must be the same as the outbound or the reverse. The outbound license, i.e. the license you have to license my, the derivative of my work must be the same as mine. So uh, if you use a different non-compatible license, you are violating this condition. And so you don't get the permission. This is the variability. Uh, it's a condition of keeping uh, what is made open once it's preserved open. Because otherwise you can take some software and make some changes, distribute a derivative, not granting the same principles, and, and, and then you are taking away some of the freedom. So you, your own customers will not benefit from the same permission you have been able to, to, to benefit. So a, 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 a copyleft means that you must preserve the, uh, the liberties to the downstream, to your recipients. So, and this is the main condition that al allows and that requires persistent. So uh, depending on how much the, the derivative is, uh, is involved, how much of this derivative is involved, if, the same, if only the library of the entire software distribution uh, provided that it's derivative, then you have strong and weak copy left. But this is one very important concept. Uh, open source is software that gives you permissions to use, modify, distribute, and so on and so, on and so forth. Copy left is a subsect of open source that imposes uh, persistence on the copyright conditions onto derivatives. So if you take software, modify software and distribute software, this mm -hmm. software must comply with the original, okay? Uh, and so uh, there is a case where uh, uh, licenses, uh, you take many different pieces and these licenses are incompatible. So they have so many uh, requirements, more so many conditions that complying with one, uh, uh, would violate another and so on and so forth. So, um, um, or one say, you must be, you must license all derivative under license A and the other say, you must license all derivatives under uh, license B and you cannot uh, only, and you cannot do both unless the, uh, the condition, the inbound permits so. So there is incompatibility. And this is the single most uh, uh, important problem to be solved in software, uh, open source um, software. And this goes under the name of compliance. Compliance is a, a, is a sort of a, the price for using the freedoms. You get, uh, you get something for free, but you can, we have something that you must be careful how you handle. So it's a, it's a trade off between complexity and having to pay a price. So that concludes my uh, my um, my my copyright uh, my my software um, uh, explanation. I wanted to speak on text uh, of text and data mining, but we're uh, we're short of time, so I, I will be skipping this matter entirely, and I will just um, uh, I will just pass on to open data. Uh, which is also a, a, a subject of, of, of interest of mine. And it's uh, uh, um, is a, a, a very important uh, movement. Uh, in order to have open data, you should have protected data. Yeah? So, and because data are protected only by, um, um, only in Europe, uh, you could say, okay, but in other say in other uh, jurisdiction, we would not have uh, this issue. But this is not the case because uh, legally speaking, yes, provided that you get hold of the data. If you don't get all of the data, you don't have open data. Even even if you don't have any any anything uh, opposing to that on the legal side. But open data means a, a more than having the permission to use reuse the data. That open data means to have data accessible 
machine readable so that you can, can feed that to a machine and have them process without human intervention as much as possible, because otherwise it would be too costly. So when you see open data, you speak of a, a, a uh, format of standards how, under which data must be published. Um, and especially when data are produced by the state or by public entities, this is public money. And, and, and there is no reason why a, a Oh, there is no. Oh, in general, there is no reason why a public authority or public entity should uh, withhold the right to use this data. Because um, uh, the general idea is that data are as much uh, as uh, are more valuable if they are shared and uh, they are used because there are unexpected users, and the public itself gets more uh, advantage by sharing this data. But that's true also for private entities, not just for, the, in, in fact, many private entities do produce uh, uh, charities and non-charities. I mean, uh, even companies produce open data because they are interested in into, into producing that. But um, yeah, um, and of course, you must make sure that these data are, are unencumbered by legal uh, protection, which in, uh, uh, sorry, too, too long, too fast, um, which in Europe means that you have to have a license. And the license is available, non, uh, is, is, is worth having uh, in any case. But before we spoke about copyleft, in, in software, actually, copy, the copyleft concept can work in any subject, in any uh, sub, uh, area where there is copyright. Actually, there is copyleft also on creative, um, creative um, uh, works. Uh, if you know um, Creative Commons, this is the most, the single most uh, used license, uh, family of licenses for releasing uh, in an open source fashion, uh, creative like uh, creative items like music, like pictures, like movies, like everything. Uh, my book is uh, is under cop uh, uh, a Creative Commons uh, license, um, and there is one particular license uh, and under, under uh, which is a copyleft. A license which is share alike, Creative Commons by share alike. Um, so um, I praise the use of these share alike licenses in software and in somewhat in creative uh, works, but I advocate strongly against using them. Actually, for licensing data, you have two models uh, having one license with conditions with, uh, well, likely Creative Commons by or by SA, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, um, the Linux Foundation has produced a, a, a different license for, for sharing data. And then you have ODBL, IODBL, and et cetera. Uh, I advise against that. Uh, open data, in my view, should be as uh, liberally licensed, as frictionless, license or made available better. So um, I advocate using a, a particular uh, a variant of, uh, of the Creative Commons, which is called CC0, um, whose idea is to create a situation as close as possible to full um, public um, domain. So everybody should be uh, available, uh, should be able to use uh, as liberally as possible. So open data should be made uh, as freely as available as possible under a, a waiver condition. And by all means, please avoid share alike. Uh, that concludes almost in time my presentation. I'm sorry, I, have, I wanted to speak on text and data mining, which is a, is, a, is a very interesting subject, but there is no time. There is some, some slides on it. You can dig more because if you do science, uh, that's that's a, 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 a very surprising angle of copyright. But um, I think these are the two uh, the two topics I wanted to discuss with more um, in depth um, explanation. Uh, if you want to, if you are an Italian national or you can understand Italian, uh, you can uh, read my book. It's uh, of course you can have it via Amazon. Uh, 
but it's also available uh, 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 from the internet. It's under uh, Creative Commons by SA. So you are free to even to share it. And, um, but alas, it's not translated in any different language. So if you don't speak or understand Italian, there is little scope in having it. So that ends my presentation and I'm very keenly uh, open the floor for any possible question.